Church say man again. Oh, Lamb of God. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you, elder. Thank you, band. Thank you so much for ushering in the presence of the Lord with that beautiful uh, Easter uh, song. Uh, the story is in the melody, and we are grateful. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. We are so grateful, uh, all your young people, I'm assuming, I look up as they're all there, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We are grateful for the Christian Education uh, Ministry who was uh, teaching our young people on, a, on the level, um, on their level, uh, so that they can, they can earn some um, eggs and candy. <laughs> no, that's not true. We want them to know the story. We want them to understand because this is the linchpin. Easter is the linchpin. Resurrection is the linchpin of our faith. And so if they get this, then they can get the rest of it. Amen. Amen. We're so grateful for the scriptures that have been read in our hearing. Uh, Luke, the 24th chapter, Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter, verse 1 through 12. And I ask that you might pray with me on the sermon topic, Does the Resurrection Make a Difference? Does the resurrection make a difference? Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come in the name of Jesus to Christ. God, asking that you shake us and that you wake us out of form and fashion and what we always do and what we always heard and what we think we know. God, we ask that you might open up our minds and our hearts that we might hear from you, that you might give us a revelation that will save our life. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight. For you, Lord, are indeed my strength and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So the word is out that Jesus is risen from the dead. But the question is, do you believe it or not? I just pause there because sometimes we do do things because we've always done things. And when you get to that place where it's a place of conflict and challenge, sometimes we don't go into the face of that challenge. We just kind of pretend until we're no longer challenged. And so the question is, do you believe in the resurrection or not? It's the thing that keeps a lot of people out of churches, it keeps a lot of people uh, out of the uh, salvation, and it keeps a lot of people um, be acting below their level of faith because they don't want to talk about it, but they really don't believe that a man that was dead got up from the dead. There's a lady once who uh, marveled at all the people who came to church on Easter Sunday. And she said, do you suppose it would make any difference and her friend said, what do you mean will it make any difference? And she said, Easter. Will Easter make any difference for all these people or will life tomorrow be the same as it was yesterday? And I thought this lady's question was profound. It, it's thought provoking. It kind of makes you have to pull back the mask as you seek and wrestle with how would you answer her question? Will Easter make any difference for all the people who say they celebrate Easter, or will life tomorrow be the same as it was yesterday? Will we just go back to business as usual? Did you only feel sorry for Jesus as he hung on the cross, or the same way or, or, or the same or differently than you would feel sorry for anyone who was being abused? Was, was, your, was your sentiment for Jesus any different than it is for anyone who was being falsely accused? Or are your tears and heavy heart a demonstration of your love and gratefulness of, of Jesus for what he did for you as in, when he died on the cross? What Jesus did for you, does it make a difference in your life, in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit? Yeah. Easter is about the, the impossible becoming a reality. And so if you get stuck on things that you can touch and see and smell, and that's the only thing that's in your reality, then you are challenged today. Because Easter is about death giving way to life. 
Death giving way to life, not life giving way to death. You see what I'm saying? Easter is about a son who died and a savior who lives for eternity. It, it, it is the worst tragedy melting into the greatest triumph. It's about the penalty of sin being paid with the blood of Jesus as the price for our salvation. Now, what am I supposed to do with that? Okay. <laughs> Speak, Lord. <laughs> A lot has happened to Jesus since we saw him on last Sunday, Palm Sunday. The question is, did cleansing the temple really matter? What difference did it make that Jesus went into the temple and turned over the tables and ran the cheaters out? Did the trials make a difference? Did the lying eyewitnesses make a difference? Did the decision to free Barabbas and crucify Jesus make a difference? Did the, did the hammer and the nails make a difference? Did the presence of Jesus' friends, Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and John, make a difference? Did Jesus' sacrifice of his life on that old rugged cross, does it truly make a difference to you? To you, my, I, my, my immediate visceral response is yes, they all mattered. They all made a difference. If not to you, they made a difference for Jesus. Jesus' life has changed since Palm Sunday. It was a life and death and life again kind of change. Remember on Palm Sunday and Jesus left the, the homes of his friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, and he and his disciples walked down to Jerusalem where he entered the gates. And remember he sat up on a donkey and he looked around and he looked at Jerusalem and he wept. And then he rode his donkey through town and the people treated him like a king. Everybody remember that from Palm Sunday, right? Shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that he comes in the name of the Lord, blessed be the son of David. And they waved palm branches and they laid their cloaks in the way. Everybody with me? Yeah. But what difference did Palm Sunday make? Was it just another parade to you? Was it just a man riding on a donkey? Or was it just a reason to lay down cloaks and to wave palm branches in the way? Did it really make a difference? As you think about your life, did Palm Sunday make a difference. On Monday, Jesus went back to the temple and was outraged when he observed the, the cheating of the money changers and, and the thieving money changers. He, he observed this in the unscrupulous sellers of sacrificial animals. He got upset because those animals were defective and they were unacceptable animals and they were, they were being provided by men who disrespected and dishonored the importance of sacrificial an animals. How do we know that? Because they knew, they knew how important it was to have a perfect sacrifice. They would not have been selling defective animals. Got me? After all, what did it matter to them? They were just looking for a way to make money. What did they, they care about the rules of engagement as outlined in the Levitical laws? The sacrifice must be perfect without spot or wrinkle. But did they care? Did it really make a difference to them? On Tuesday, Jesus returned to the temple and the religious leaders questioned his authority. Did it make a difference that Jesus took the time to teach extensively to them and to warn them about the destruction of Jerusalem that was to come? Did they really want to know the truth or were they just trying to trip up Jesus? Did they really care? Did they really want to know? Or were they just trying to see who could get Jesus caught in a lie? Did they want to know the answers to the questions or were they just trying to show how smart they were? Does Jesus teaching in the temple really make a difference? I'm asking. On Wednesday, scripture does not say very much about this day, but tradition has it that this was the day on this Wednesday in the middle of the week, on this Wednesday, on, on that day of the week when we have uh, well begun uh, the week, but we have not yet got to the end of the week. On, on this day when our mind begins to drift into the future, like what we're going to do on the weekend to come, on this Wednesday, this hump day, uh, it's thought that Judas uh, made the fateful decision that he would, that he would uh, betray Jesus and it changed his life forever. It's the day Judas negotiated his betrayal of Jesus with the, with the Sanhedrin. So the question is, did Judas' decision make a difference or is a kiss just a kiss? 
On Thursday night, in preparation for the Passover, Jesus washed his disciples' feet and instituted the Last Supper. It was here he girded up his waist and he served his disciples. It was here he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat in remembrance of me. And he, after, likewise, he took the cup. And he said, this is a cup of my blood, which is shed for you. Drink in remembrance of me as often as you should remember me. Do this. But the question is, was it just another meal? With his disciples, or did this supper, which ended up being the last supper, make a difference? After supper, the Bible says they sang a hymn. They're on their way to Gethsemane. It was there that Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Peter cut off a soldier's ear, and Jesus was apprehended. Did Jesus' apprehension make a difference? On Friday, Jesus spent the night locked in the dungeon of the high priest where he was delivered over, over to the Roman soldiers who tormented and abused him, taking turns mocking him and, and beating him unmercifully. On Friday, the disciples' faith were weak, was so weak, most of them were afraid to show their faces in public. Where are all my friends? They are not around Jesus. Early on Friday morning, Jesus was brought before Pilate, who sent him to Herod, who sent him back to Pilate. Giving into the pressures of the Jews, Pilate washed his hands of the matter and said, I find no fault. Yet he condemned Jesus to be crucified. Does finding no fault matter? Yeah, on, on Friday, they made Jesus carry his own cross uh, through the streets of, of Jerusalem, and the people who lined the sides of the road cursed and spat at him. The same man they had said, Hosanna, yes. Hosanna. Did the Hosannas matter? The, the, on Friday, they not only stripped Jesus of all his clothing, but they stripped him of his dignity, humiliating him as they nailed him to the cross like a common criminal. And on Friday, the Roman soldiers mocked him as they, as they uh, gambled for his robe and as they put a sign over his head that said, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Being king of the Jews, does it matter? Yeah. Jesus was nailed to the cross at 9 a.m. on Friday, and the third, at that, at that was the third hour, and he died six hours later, and his body was buried in a borrowed tomb before dusk, which marked the beginning of Passover. Did Jesus' innocence of the charges against him make a difference? They made, a tomb, they made the tomb as secure as they knew how, and they placed the soldier to guard it. But did the soldier make a difference on friday the sins of the world weighed heavily on jesus yet jesus asked his father to forgive them for they know not what they do did god's forgiveness make a difference on friday jesus was thirsty and today we drink from a fountain that never runs dry does being thirsty make a difference on friday it appears as if god had abandoned his only son Jesus Christ, and Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Did Jesus' loneliness make a difference? On Friday, darkness covered the land, and the prince of darkness, Satan, he couldn't have been more pleased because he believed he had won a great victory by killing Jesus, the Son of God. Does darkness make a difference? On Friday, after they pierced him in the side, uh, then declared him dead, they, they took Jesus off the cross and laid him in the borrowed tomb, and all the hopes and all the dreams of his disciples were buried with him. Does Friday make a difference? On Saturday, Jesus' body laid in the tomb all day long, but, but he, would, he would descend into hell where he confronted Satan and took the keys back from him. Does Saturday make a difference? Does Saturday make a difference? The answer is yes. Pilate's concern was for protecting the tomb from the outside. That's why he put a guard outside. But all the while, heaven and hell were at war on the inside of the tomb. Some of us, even today, we're putting all of our show on the outside. While all along, there is war going on on the inside. In spite of our faith, our faith, we hide things from the resurrection power of God. We, we cram our little tombs full of regrets and full of secrets and unbelief. And we hide the things that we think are too difficult for God to forgive or things we are too ashamed even to ask God for forgiveness all about. 
all the time praying that darkness can make our sins appear to disappear. And while we say we surrender all, in actuality we offer everything to him except that pet pig. You know that pet pig. That pet pig that we turn over our cigarettes but we keep our drug use to ourselves. You know that pet pig, we say we're turning over our gossiping spirit, spirit and lying tongue, but we keep secretly undermining the kingdom of God. Yet we wag our finger at Pontius Pilate because he, he said he crucified, said to people, crucify Jesus. But all the while our fingers are pointing back to us as the problem. Do we make a difference? I was reading a post on the internet and it said, and it made a point I thought was worth sharing with you today. It said, Holy Saturday extends us an invitation to stop and reflect on the meaning of an inhabited tomb. During Holy Week, we think about all the things that Jesus did. But on Saturday, it's like seven last words is over. Jesus is dead. What do we do with this? What do we do with this day, this Saturday? Perhaps we should stop and reflect on the meaning of an inhabited tomb. In our eagerness to celebrate the empty tomb of, of Easter, we fly so swiftly past Holy Saturday, and we pass the opportunity to stop and think about what Jesus has done and is doing for us. We fly so swiftly past Holy Saturday, and we, and we forget to think about Jesus as man, because, you know, Jesus was both man and divine. And so Jesus, the man, is in the tomb. And if you listen to my teaching, I don't call Jesus Christ until after he has been resurrected. But that's another teaching. Saturday need not be a day of great shame or sorrow. For unlike the apostles, we already know the end of the story, right? We don't sit here today on Friday, Good Friday, when all, everybody's in black and talking about the seven last words. It's really hard for us to get to that place of crying because we already know it's Friday, but Sunday is coming. Yes. On Saturday may be a day of great uh, surrender, of, of, of surrender, a day of hum humility, and a day of reflection as we reminded that that Jesus went through all this, not because Jesus was sinful, because Jesus was sinless, but because he decided to bear our sins. It's, it's the day that we have to recognize that, that if it had not been for Jesus, yes. does Jesus matter? If it had not been for Jesus' death on the cross, did Jesus' death matter? If it had not been for Jesus being put in the tomb so that there would be some evidence that he was no longer here. The, the fact that he was risen from the dead, does it, does it matter? What, need, what, what needs to die in you uh, to live the Christian life that God created you to live? W will you let Saturday make a difference in your own life? Or are you just going to run past it because you can't wait to get to the chocolate bunny and the Easter eggs? Because on Sunday, everything changed. Everything was going to be different from now on. Because on Sunday, God demonstrated that, that he had not abandoned his son on the cross, but instead showed his love for Jesus by raising him from the dead. On Sunday, Jesus arose from the dead knowing that he said it was finished. He had finished his assignment. But God's plan had come together, and he had victory over sin, Satan, death, and the grave. This is what the Apostle Paul was talking about in 1 Thessalonians, the 15th chapter, verses 15 to 57, when he described uh, this, when the perishable, he says, uh, has put on clothes and has been clothed with the imperishable. We hear this mostly at funerals. When the, when the perishable has put on the imperishable and when, and when the mortal has put on immortality, uh, then the, the saying that is written will come true, that death has been swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Because the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God, God gives us victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So in other words, on the Sunday morning of Jesus' resurrection over 2,000 years ago, Jesus' disciples didn't know the end of the story. And for them, Jesus' death made all the difference. They were locked away in an upper room wondering, what do we do now? They were afraid to go out into the streets. 
They were without hope. They gave up everything to follow Jesus. And now, here they were, left with nothing. You know, they gave up everything to follow Jesus. And now, here they were with nothing. They, they gave up everything to follow Jesus. And here they were with nothing. So was, was following Jesus, did it, did it make a difference? They gave up their status. And they gave up their perception and, and, and their reputation to follow Jesus. Yet, did it make a difference? Here they, here they were three years later, empty-handed, broken-hearted, and afraid for their lives. Did following Jesus make a difference? Was that the right decision? Would you have made that decision? Think about it. Here you are, no longer a fisherman because somebody's got your spot. Here you are, no longer a doctor because somebody has your patience. Here you are, no longer a tax collector, because somebody else has a job. And now, did following Jesus make a difference? The Bible says that on Sunday, just about the break of day, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women came to the tomb to properly prepare Jesus' body for his burial. Upon their arrival to the tomb, they found that the stone blocking the entrance had been rolled away. They went in and did not find the body of Jesus. The two men stood by them in their shining garments, and the men said to them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen, just like he said he would. They left the tomb and told all these things to the disciples, of course, who did not believe them. Peter and John raced to the tomb, and they entered the, and saw that the linen wraps that covered Jesus' body were folded up and laid in the tomb, but his body was not there. They were looking for Jesus, the man, but Jesus was not there. They should have been looking for Christ, because Jesus Christ has been risen from the dead. Did it make a difference that Jesus was dead and Jesus Christ was risen from the dead? I'm just asking the question. Does the resurrection make a difference? Or to you, is Jesus still the man in the tomb and you just don't believe this resurrection stuff? I have to ask, you have to ask yourself the question because if you can't say it made a difference, then I wonder how you're going to get into heaven because it's required that you believe that Jesus is Lord. When Jesus Christ appeared to the women, their faith was strengthened. And they would, and they would never, it had never been before. And on Friday, the disciples were afraid of their own shadows, but on Resurrection Sunday, their faith was renewed, their faith was made strong, and they were made courageous. Was the difference the resurrection? On Sunday, Jesus, the light of the world, dispelled the darkness that had covered the land since Friday, giving his disciples a renewed sense of hope and purpose. Did Jesus, the light of the world, make a difference? But for some of us, though it has been over 2,000 years since Jesus rose from the dead, his resurrection has not really made a difference in us. For you, it's still Friday. For yes, it was our sin and God's plan that led Jesus to the cross, but it was Christ's power and Christ's authority that penetrated the darkness and resurrected Jesus to everlasting life. But for some of us, we are still stuck on Friday. Over 2,000 years ago, all the forces of hell tried to cancel Easter, but they failed. The forces of evil tried to kill the baby Jesus. Their plan failed. The same forces of evil used the political power of Rome to crucify Jesus. Their plan failed. The forces of evil did not know they were pawns in the mighty hand of God. They thought they were in control, but they had their hands on the wrong hand. God's plan was to erase our broken commandments on the cross, then destroy death by raising himself from the death, from death of the grave. A sealed tomb could not contain Jesus the Christ. I believe that Paul gives us the essentials about Easter in 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, verse 3, uh, 3 and 4. He says, for what I received, I passed on to you as, a, as of the first importance that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scripture. Paul shows that the things worth celebrating on Easter is the most important thing of our faith, that Jesus paid a debt that he did not owe because we had a debt that we could not pay. Jesus died the death that we, would, that we deserve, and Jesus was raised to new life in order to offer us eternal hope, that the more hope than we could ever think or imagine. In other words, if Jesus had not risen from the dead, then what would we, be, what would we do? What hope would we have for the future? 
Romans 6, 5 says, for certainly would have been, we would have been united in death like, like Jesus. Certainly we also shall be resurrected like Jesus. That's our hope. Our hope is that because Jesus was raised from the dead, we too would be raised from the dead. Sometimes we need object lessons. It's not enough to, to have this nebulous thought that, that Jesus was raised from the dead. So God showed us a practice run with Lazarus. God showed us evidential run with Jesus to let us know, one for the Father, one for the Son, that in Jesus come back again. It's our turn to be resurrected from the dead. There's good news from the graveyard. Uh, Jesus, Easter is about more than a stone being rolled away, a, a savior risen and the sting of death being removed. It's about Christ doing the unthinkable to win over your heart and God doing the un unimaginable to give you eternal life. Who in the world would think that in order to give you, who God did not know at the time, who, did, who sinners, and we're still sinners, to give you, to, mm, to have my, 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 my son go through my baby, Amen. go through for people that were still sinning, are still sinful, still don't believe, what difference did it make? That Jesus was risen from the dead. According to Revelations 21.3, Jesus' resurrection does make a difference. The Apostle John put it this way, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God will wipe away every tear from their eye. There'll be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever because of the resurrection. Somebody here may feel like it's still Friday because you feel abandoned by God. You feel like God has forgotten your name, forgotten your need, and even forgotten that you're still on the cross. If that's how you feel this morning, this, this is good news for you. It may be Friday in your life, but take another look because the day is Resurrection Sunday. Whatever has locked you into Good for Friday is now released into Resurrection Sunday. Not only did Jesus raise up from the dead, but you can raise up out of those dead situations that have held you down and kept you entombed, making you think that you are nobody, making you think there's no way out, making you think that nobody loves you, making you think that God won't help you, that God won't do the impossible. God wanted you to see that he's done the impossible. And guess what? He's doing it again. God's still working miracles every day in our life. But we walk around and I think that God, oh, God did it for her, but he won't, God will do it for you. But you've got to be in a position, a humble position at the foot of the cross, looking up to Jesus saying, Lord, I need you. And the blood of Jesus shall cover you. It may be fried in your life, but take another look. The tomb is empty and Jesus Christ is alive. God has not abandoned you. Even though the world will tell you that, that, that God has left you, that God, who would love you the way, what, you know what you're thinking, you know what you've done. Why would God love you? That's the question. But I'm telling you, the love of God makes a difference. The love of God makes, makes a way out of nowhere. The love of God embraces you when you are unembraceable. The love of God lifts you when you are heavy and, and, and down. The love of God pulls you up. Out of those muck and miry places, the love of God makes a difference in our life. Yeah. If you find yourself discouraged and with a sense of hopelessness like the disciples must have felt on that Friday, I want you to know that Jesus Christ's resurrection from the dead made a difference. And though it seems like Satan and the forces of evil are wrecking havoc for everyone, everywhere, even today, and though it seemed like it's darker than it's ever been, and it seems like it's getting darker every day, I'm looking at the same news you are. I got good news for you from the empty tomb that Christ's resurrection makes a difference. Even though you look out and you see havoc and you see destruction, know that God is still in control because God makes a difference. I want you to know that what we see in our eyes is not the end. We are only in the process of the eternal becoming eternal. Uh, God, Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find your rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. 
Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your request be known unto God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, shall guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The question is, does the resurrection make a difference? And the answer is yes, it does. Amen. Just want to pray.